So let's go ahead and we're going to get started. I'm going to try to start uh, and do this sequentially. So hopefully it'll make sense. So let's start. Okay. Uh, so Native American tribes. Now this is a really big concept, but I'm going to kind of put it down into the most important need to know. Things that you need to know are general similarities between the tribes. So that's things like the emphasis is going to be on family and religion. Uh, fighting only occurs if they need resources. Um, it's going to be a lot of, uh, if you're on certain parts of so the East Coast, you're more stationary as well as the Southwest. Other ones which are more in the deserts are going to have to move based on where their food sources is. Uh, in terms of the biggest Native American tribes you need to know, uh, the biggest one overall is the Iroquois Confederacy. That one is very important. So remember, that's when the tribes come together so that they can be able to work towards one common goal. Iroquois Confederacy still exists. They're also going to be the ones that are going to interact a lot with the Americans. Uh, the Southwest tribes, the biggest thing is going to be irrigation. So knowing that the irrigation is going to cause them to be able to be stationary, even in a desert environment. And then the uh, Cahokia, C-A-H-O-K-I-A. -A. Uh, those are the mound builders. So those are going to be the ones that are going to focus on religion, and they create the mounds to get closer to the gods. Okay? Um, but most of the stuff for that period one is either going to be on the Spanish colonization of America, the French colonization of America. Remember, France is going to be in Canada, and they are going to revolve around trade. Trade with the Native Americans, positive relationships. In particular, what one animal is very important to the French? Beaver. Beavers. Beaver pelts. You need to relate beaver. If you see the word beaver, get really excited because you know it's French. Okay? And then uh, Spaniards, just know the conquistadors taking over of the Native Americans as uh, slaves and then missions. Good with Native American tribes? That one's going to be very broad on the AP exam. Uh, that, this person who put the greats, so that's just the four major regions. Most important is the East Coast. Uh, so that is going to be um, go, uh, stationary, agriculture-based, permanent settlements. You have the Great Basin, that is Utah. That is too desert-driven, so everybody has to move around for sources. Uh, the Great Plains, which are going to also move around, but we're reliant on the buffalo. And then the Southwest tribes, which are going to be uh, focusing on the Anasazi and things like that. Oh, shoot. I raised the wrong one. But I know what it was. Okay. All right, so heading into period two, we're going to start off with the Colombian Exchange. The Columbian exchange is going to begin when Christopher Columbus comes over. We begin to exchange goods, ideas, and especially disease. What is the most important disease that we're going to spread? Smallpox. Smallpox. Absolutely destroys the native populations. So while we have positives, such as the exchange of foods, uh, the exchange of ideas, technology, the big negatives is it does end up taking over Native American lands and also destroys them through disease. Now, with the Colombian exchange, we also transition into what is known as the triangular trade. Okay? Triangular trade begins in the Americas. The Americas produce raw goods, sugar, indigo, tobacco. Then it goes to England. England manufactures those goods into sellable products, clothing, liquor, whatever it could be. It then goes to Africa, where they trade those goods for slaves. Those slaves come across on the Middle Passage in order to, once again, create the products, go to England, and it's all triangular and circular. Now, with mercantilism, mercantilism is specific to colonial powers. So what that means is you only trade, colonies are only allowed to trade within colonies. So colonies trade within, with England or possibly with India because it's also a British colony. You would not do capitalism, which is foreign trade with France and China. It's very specific. It causes less wealth in the colonies, but 
the greater colonial power, in this case England, feels like they have better power and control over their colonies. It's a way pretty much to make you stay here and not let you leave. Uh, if you want a great example, who's seen Moana? Yeah, good movie. In Moana, it talks all about, there's an entire song about how you're not allowed to leave. And all the trade is here. And you don't go elsewhere. It's literally, it's so funny because they constantly say, and no one leaves. It's kind of creepy. But that's the idea. You stay in one spot. You don't trade with others because all the power and control stays within that colony. Make sense? If you want to borrow my copy of Moana, you can. It's very good. Okay. Uh, heading into Middle Passage. This is another one. So remember, Middle Passage, Africa to America. Olado Equiano. O-L-A-U-D-A-H. E-Q-U-I-A-N-O. He is going to be a sourcing for the Middle Passage. He's the one that we know for sure is going to say this is what the Middle Passage was really like. He's going to be our major diary and primary source for the truth about the Middle Passage. So if you see his name, it'll probably only be in a sourcing on the triangular trade of the Middle Passage. Make sense? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to head... Sam singing the one I know, I saw. Very aggressively. I saw him doing it. Um, so now we're going to head into Colonial America. Some of you guys' ships are very loud. So let's head into America. We're going to start up in the north with the bringing over of Christianity. So remember, causation... Do you guys have a question? Are you sure? Okay, if you do, ask me. So, remember, over in England... Puritans and separatists begin to feel massive persecution. They disagree with the Church of England. They want religious freedom, but religious freedom with an asterisk, which we'll talk about in a second, but they want to escape persecution. That's the cause of why they left. They're going to split into two people, which is extremely important to know the difference. Puritans purify the Church of England. The Church of England isn't necessarily bad. It just needs to be fixed. It, we're not wanting to leave the church. We're just wanting to fix the problems in the church. So they're going to be the ones that are going to settle in Massachusetts, Massachusetts Bay Colony. Puritans is also the halfway covenant, so the idea that once people <laughs> stop coming, uh, if your grandparents had the church and they were going to heaven, then you would go to heaven. That was religious freedom, as in they came over to have their own religion, but you don't have religious freedom in the Puritan religion, if that makes sense. You don't get to just go make your own decisions on things. You follow the Puritan law, and if not, you either get killed, a.k.a. Salem Witch Trials, or you get shunned out to go to Pennsylvania or Rhode Island. So religious freedom with an asterisk. Okay? Uh, did attempt to uh, convert the Native Americans. Were not very successful. The other group is the separatists. Those are going to be the pilgrims and the Mayflower Compact, which is the first law system in America in terms of modern day law uh, remember they come over to completely separate from the church of England they create their own religion had a little bit more religious freedom they break up very quickly into multiple other religions those are things like Baptists, Protestants we'll talk all about those splits in the 1820s Okay. now one thing about the Puritans as well as the separatists is they believe they had the Christian duty which was the idea that they were commanded by God and God designated them to come west, convert the Native Americans, which they didn't really do, create the perfect religion, and be saved. It's kind of this idea that God told us to go west, which is why we cannot justify taking native lands, because we can take it because God said it was okay. Oh, I was going to ask, like, behind like, the concept, that, which, like, which religion was it that said that if your parents came to church, they could be kid and That was the Puritans. That was the halfway covenant. Yeah. Exactly. So that was the whole idea of somebody else gets to go, and so you get to go too. And it was to try to solve people because they didn't want to have a religion where nobody was going to heaven. So they kind of make up this cheap way to go to heaven. That's how it works. Uh, mestizo. Mestizo is a little bit earlier. That is going to be the mixing between European and Native American. That was a key one that people were struggling with. Yep. And what was the word... Mulatto, but we will use that in the next unit. Okay. So that will be on this test. Mulatto is the mixing of white and black. Um, mestizo is specifically European, in particular Spaniards. 
and Native Americans. Uh, mulatto is going to be specifically through, remember we talked about the, uh, how slave owners would rape their slaves? That's where the mulatto is going to come out of. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Uh, so. All right, so let's start heading into the Revolutionary War. So in terms of beginning into the revolution, we have a couple of Native American problems that are going to end up coming up. So when we talk about the Pequot War, the Pequot War is the same as Pontiac's Rebellion. These are actually two of the similar terms. This is going to be right before the American Revolution. Remember how everybody was moving west and people were angry and there was conflicts with the colonists? So this is where we talk about that they are going to decide that they are going to revolt. They are going to say that this is going to be how we are going to stop the colonists from coming into our land. Remember we talked about when they surrounded the fort and they shot in and killed all the people and then they thought that would solve the problem, but instead it rose up conflicts as well? That's what we're talking about. So some people will use this as a cause of the American Revolution because it's showing that there's conflicts between the colonists and the Native Americans. Now, okay. um, Tom, yes? Um, what's the King Philip's War? So the King Philip's War is going to be another colonial problem in the early... It's highly unlikely it'll be on the AP exam. It's basically it's the same exact thing as in it's another conflict between colonists coming west and the Native American lands. So the same exact thing happens where people begin to fight over their lands. Native Americans are end up going to be able to fight back, thinking it will solve the problem. Americans come in and kill the natives. You're going to see a lot more Pontiac Rebellion than you're going to see King Philip's War. In fact, I can only think of one time in the 70s when they had one on King Philip's War. So I was studying much more Pontiac's Rebellion. Um, okay, Bacon's Rebellion. Bacon's Rebellion is going to be one of the major causes of the Revolutionary War. So what happens with Bacon's Rebellion is, remember, Nathaniel Bacon is going to be angry at the government, in particular, of Virginia, and they're going to say that this is not fair, we are not having valid representation, they are being <coughs> oppressive. So remember, this is where he goes and finds the slaves and the former slaves and says, we're going to do a giant rebellion, and then he shows up that day, and those 20,000 goes down to about 10 people. And then, remember, they get surrounded, and everyone kills everybody. And it's kind of, well, depends on if you think it's sad or not. Um, but Bacon dies, and so does everybody else. Basically, what this is, is this is going to be the first real course of action, as in a rebellion, in the American Revolution. So this is the first attempt at showing we're angry at our American colony, or our, our American overlords, England. Um, what was this first name? Nathaniel. Nathaniel Bacon. Yeah, some people see him as a really sad figure. Some people see as you were dumb. So, but don't put dumb on the AP exam. Make him smile smarter -er than that. He's got to be smarter. -er. Smarter. Okay, -er. making sure. Oh, impressment. Another cause of the American Revolution. Impressment is going to be all about the Navy. This is where England had the ability to take a ship and say, you are now all Navy, sol or Navy seamen. You have to become a soldier for England. You don't have a choice in the matter. So this is where they forced American colonists and only American colonists. They couldn't do this to English citizens. So only citizens of their colonies could they take and make them go into the Navy. Uh, Thomas Paine's common sense, although it says common pain, it is actually common sense, not common pain. Uh, so common sense is going to be the pamphlet that is going to basically try to convince people why you should support the revolution. It lists the problems with England and why we need to fix them, and it gives solutions. Some men say that I'm intense or I'm insane. Yes. You want a revolution? I want a revolution. All right. You could also sing the song. Yes. So with Tom and Payne's common sense, it's basically an ideology of why we should go to a revolution. Sons of Liberty are going to be the major group that is going to actually fight in this revolution. They are going to be the ones that are the Boston Tea Party. They are going to be the people that are going to tar and feather. They are going to be the ones that are going to do anything possible to get this revolution started. And then they are going to be the major fighters of the war. They are the, basically what I would call the rebels. So if you've seen like the new Star Wars, they are the rebel army. That's basically what they are. 
They're going to do anything and everything they can to revolt against their government. Now, Somerset decision is the only one it looks like is in the actual American Revolution. That one's actually very important. Somerset decision is in England, where they are going to say that slavery is unconstitutional, it is illegal, and because of this, slavery is now banned. That means it's going to trickle down into the colonies and no longer have slaves. Because of this, slaves in the South are going to say, if we fight for the Loyalists and the English army, that means that afterwards we will be free of slaves. So really this is what is going to have an upswing in African Americans wanting to get better rights in America by fighting for the English army. Make sense? All right. Last one with the revolution. What immediately happened to America after the Revolutionary War and what key people helped? Well, really what happens right away is America goes into turmoil because we don't have a very strong government. So the Articles of Confederation had already been implemented the first year of the Revolutionary War, 1776. And immediately afterwards, we have that same system. Now, the major thing that's going to happen is we don't have the ability to create a government when our government says we don't have an ability to create the government. Um, I've gotten a couple of questions over who was the president during the Articles. There wasn't one. The Articles of Confederation said you couldn't have an executive branch. So that meant no president. So we actually went several years without an actual person as our leader in America. Um, basically what's going to happen is with the Articles, you're going to have all the negatives, which is no ability to tax. Uh, you have fights between the states. You have no ability to have an army. They're going to say we should start a new constitution. The main constitution is going to be created by James Madison. James Madison is going to be the one that is going to write this constitution. Hey, do you want to shut the door while you're up? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Everybody gets really loud right about at 11 o'clock. Um, so they're going to have the debate over the constitution written by James Madison. The Federalists are going to be the ones that support the constitution. Big government, government control over your lives. Anti-Federalists say we should not have that. Uh, remember, the Federalists are going to be Hamilton. Anti-Federalists especially are going to be Jefferson. And then it ends up creating the Constitution through compromise. Hopefully that's what you were asking for here. What did James Madison <laughs> campaign to have in the Constitution? Uh, James Madison campaigned for the entire Constitution. Uh, I think instead what I would say do instead of that is the major thing James Madison does after the revol or after the Constitution is created. James Madison is going to advocate for the addition of the Bill of Rights. So remember, he is going to become a Democratic Republican right after this when the political parties form. He says we have to protect individual rights, so James Madison is going to add that in there. That's the only thing I can think of that this question be referring to is going to be that. All right, so George Washington's farewell address. Things that are most important. Number one, it says, come together as a country. You are one nation of America. Have national unity. Two and three are the most important ones. Two, don't have political parties. Don't have a two-party system. They are bad. They are awful. They will ruin America. They'll cause everybody to be angry at each other all the time, which, again, didn't happen, right? Okay. Number three, no foreign alliance systems. Do not make allies. Don't go to war with other people. Stay as your own person. Don't fight in somebody else's <coughs> war. Again, we followed that. Yes. yes. Basically, George Washington says everything we shouldn't do. One year after Washington is out of the presidency, we create the first political parties. And two years after, we go and we get into problems with France. So we immediately break his problems. And that's going to be with two different things. The XYZ affair, I've had a bunch of questions on this. The XYZ affair is going to be when France wants America to join the American Revolution. It's discovered that French diplomats have been paying American diplomats to tell American presidents and things like that that we should go to war and help France win their revolution. Because of this, America is going to be really turned off from the French Revolution. Say, if we're just being bribed, then why would we go? Um, and then... Also in John Adams' presidency is the Alien and Sedition Acts. This is going to be when we're going through that whole problem with France, like the Quasi-War, 
when everyone's disagreeing about what we should do with France, Alien and Sedition Acts makes it illegal to speak badly about the president or about the government. And if you speak badly about it, you can go to jail or be executed for it. A lot of people, when the breaking point for John Adams' presidency is going to be saying that you're breaking the First Amendment right to freedom of speech. And it was considered unconstitutional, but it comes up again in World War I, where it's definitely considered unconstitutional. Yeah? The Quasi War was an unofficial war. According to the U.S. government, it never happened. Basically, it was just an economic war. We stopped each other from trading with other people. We created blockades called embargoes, which meant that France couldn't trade with anybody. France made it so we couldn't trade with anybody. That's pretty much what the war was. Hardly any blood was shed. Was what? Yeah, naval skirmishes. But basically, that just—it's all about the embargo, right? And Navy ships are going to be the ones that are going to block your countries from trading. And if you have two Navy ships right next to each other that are both creating embargoes, they're going to fight. But this wasn't a ground war. We didn't go invade other people. It was mostly all Navy. Yeah. I have a question, but I don't really understand the elastic clause on the 9th Amendment. So, yeah, so the elastic clause is the idea that not everything is in the Constitution. We can adjust our Constitution based on our modern-day times. That's why we can have laws about... Um, why we can have laws about cars and things like that. A modern day example of the elastic clause with the in this time period it's gonna be the National Bank is Obamacare. There's nothing in the Constitution that says that you can have subsidized health care. So when Obamacare was sued and it went to the Supreme Court, it was over whether or not the Constitution elastic clause allows you to be able to add something in that's necessary for the people, but is it technically in the Constitution? So with the National Bank Hamilton's going to say, our Constitution says we need to make money. A national bank will solve this. The Democratic Republicans say there is nothing in the Constitution that says that you can put all of America's government into our own bank or forcing the American citizens to bank at this bank. Uh, that's against the Constitution, which it was found the second time to be unconstitutional. Once we have an actual Supreme Court that matters, then they're able to start making these decisions. Anybody have any more questions about anything in this unit? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I know like the Northwest Ordinance is like a positive. Yes. Article, yes. But, like, what exactly? Yeah, so two positives about the, or one major positive about the articles is going to be the creation of the Northwest Ordinance. That Ohio River Valley that was being debated in the French Revolution is now going to become an official territory. Instead of just saying, go at it, go find stuff, they're actually going to go in and create separate sections. They're going to designate certain areas where you can be able to live. It's more organized. And the two most important things is, one, it provides free education, which is the first time in America that's happened. And two, it's also the first prohibition of slavery in America. That is really the only big positive of the articles. If you're going to go off and say there was no king, you better expand upon that and tell me how it wasn't a king. The major thing is Northwest Ordinance. All right, if you have any more individual questions, let me know. You have about maybe three minutes left in lunch. Have a good day.